In this video, we're going to investigate the risk of OLED burn-in. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I'm a material reviewer and professional calibrator. For this test, I have purchased a brand new LG 65-inch E8 OLED TV in the UK, which is still brand new sealed in its retail box. Now, some of you may ask me, why don't I just like borrow one from a manufacturer, one of their review samples, but the fact of the matter is, I don't know what the results of this test is going to be, so I think it is probably better for all parties concerned that I purchase this television myself. Now, why the LG E8 and not the C8 then? Because I'm the sort of person who likes to pay extra for more benefits, and I think since I'm going to get stuck with this TV anyway, I might as well pay a bit more to get the TV that I really like. And I really dig the integrated soundbar and also the picture on glass design on the E8. I'm that sort of person who is willing to pay a bit extra. For example, I'm happy to use my air mouse or just pay a bit extra to upgrade my flights to premium economy or even like business class so that you know when I queue up at the airport I can go up to the priority line and start asking everyone is this a priority line? Is this a priority line? I guess you can say that I'm one of those who they call a priority. And so this is the LG E8 and I'm gonna unbox this and then run the test. So I've been running this LG E8 OLED TV for 20 hours a day for more than 6 months now. And what I'm going to do in the first instance is to go into the service menu and show you the number of hours that has been accumulated. So if I press a button on the service remote, enter the password and you can see that the UTT count, that's the number of hours operation, is around 3740 hours. So that equates to slightly more than 6 months of running 20 hours a day. And the compensation cycle count is 933 for the minor compensation cycle, which is of RS. And for the major compensation cycle, which is JB, there has been one which was triggered at around 2000 hours. I haven't actually gone into the user menu to trigger it manually. So let's get out from the service menu and what I'm going to do is to talk you through how I've been actually sending these real-world broadcast programs to the TV for hourly at a time. So you can see currently it is displaying from channel 4 HD and I have actually an app installed on my smartphone here which links up to a Logitech Harmony Hub which will send out an infrared signal to a Humex 500T Freeview Player Recorder box which I've actually got in for the purpose of this 6 month real world OLED burn-in test. And if I actually press the off button on the app, it will trigger off a series of infrared signal from the Harmony app which will switch off the television and also switch off the Freeview Play box which is from Humex and if I press another button it will actually start up the TV and also the Humex Freeview Play box and then obviously it is still stuck on channel 4 HD at the moment but I've programmed a series of protocol which will automatically start to switch the channel after a certain interval has passed so let's wait for it and you can see that you know it automatically switches to 103 which is ITV HD after a gap. Now I like to leave a gap for this one. You know sometimes it's not always a good thing to have things too tight. But what I've been doing is to run the three most popular channels in the UK, namely BBC, ITV and also Channel 4 in subsequent rotations through this app because what this app allows us to do is also to set certain schedules for certain channels. So for example, what I've been doing is to, let's say, start off with BBC in the morning and then run it for four hours. 
ask the app to switch it off automatically and switch off the Hue Max Box automatically. Let the TV go into standby for about 10 minutes when the compensation cycle will take place. And then after about 10 minutes, the automated protocols will ask the Harmony Hub to send a series of infrared signal to both the TV and also the Hue Max Freeview Play box to start them up again and then swap channels to let's say ITV run it for 4 hours and then put it into standby for 10 minutes and then the next cycle will be with channel 4 for 4 hours put it into standby and I've been doing this for 20 hours a day I dare not even look at my electricity bill but I've been doing this 20 hours a day for more than 6 months now and I think this is a more accurate representation of how normal users will be using their TVs. I know my colleagues at artings.com have been running their own burn-in test on B6 and C7 OLEDs, but they are only running the same content on the same TV 20 hours a day you know, for more than six months or maybe even up to a year. That's just not how normal people are going to be using their televisions. Normal people are going to swap from one channel to another, maybe do other things, playing games, maybe watching movies. So these three channels, BBC, ITV and also Channel 4, what we have are logos you know, from time to time. There's an ITV logo there and occasionally some of the channels will be showing movies with top and bottom letterbox bars and sometimes they will have spots on with lots of bright logos and scoreboards and things like that. So I think it is a more accurate representation of how users will be using their television. And if I go into the user menu to show you how this TV has been set up, I basically went into the ISM Expert Dark Room mode, which is the most accurate out-of-the-box picture preset, and left all the values at default, OLED light at 60, and then contrast at 85. And then if we go into the expert controls, the white balance up menu, I haven't touched any of them. I haven't actually calibrated this television. I'm just leaving it in default, just like how normal people would actually use it. So what can we find then after running this test for six months, 20 hours a day, four hourly block at a time, switching between different channels? To do that, what we'll do is to change the source of this TV to an OPPO 203 that I've hooked up and I'm playing an ABS HD test disc and what I'm going to do is to go into the full field slides, full field color slides and then hopefully we will check whether there has been any image retention or permanent screen burn. So this is 100% here and if we go forward to 75% you can just look for yourself on the camera. Hopefully there won't be too much reflections in this room which will distract from seeing any image retention or permanent screen burn but when I scrutinized it at night you know I don't really see any OLED burning effect or image sticking or permanent screen burn at all and red is generally the most problematic color as shown by artings.com's test so what we're going to do is to scrutinize this to me it looks quite clean and then we go to green and then blue and then cyan and then we'll pay particular attention to magenta because magenta is a hue that has a red base in it and then we'll go towards yellow as well and to my eyes after running these real world broadcast channels on this TV for more than 6 months, 20 hours a day there has been no sign of OLED burning and the reason why I think the, the risk of burning has been overblown is because you know some people are looking at evidence of OLED burning in stores, but that is not truly representative of what normal consumers are going to get in their home. Because the key component that prevents image retention and burning on these OLED TVs are the compensation cycles. So let me explain a bit about what these compensation cycles do. When you put these TVs into standby, after four operation hours, they will start running a compensation cycle. This compensation cycle will be sensing and detecting the voltage and current that will be running through every pixel. And then they will be self-adjusting the voltage to make sure that the luminance output remains the same, remains constant. Now, in stores, the problem is that some stores, they have a hard power switch when they power down the whole store at the end of the day. So these OLED TVs that are being 
demoed in stores, they don't actually get a chance to run these compensation cycles, which is critical to prevent image retention and also permanent screen burn. So in a normal home, you will be powering down these TVs using your remote control, putting it into standby where these compensation cycles can run and they can go a long way towards preventing image retention and permanent screen burn. And this is also why I generally advise people not to buy a second-hand OLED TV from a store, not to buy any demo OLED TV because you don't know how these TVs have been used, you don't know how they have been powered down, you don't know whether the compensation cycles have been running correctly. But back to this OLED TV, this LG E8, which I've been running for more than 6 months, 20 hours a day, and 4 hourly block at a time, switching between different channels, and there has been no sign of permanent screen burn. So I think it is very unlikely that you will develop any OLED burn-in on a 2018 or later set as long as you vary your content if you are just using it normally. And also, it is extremely important to make sure that you power down your OLED TV by using a remote control, put it into standby. Don't just flick off a power switch, don't do a hard power down. You need to put these TVs into standby to make sure that the compensation cycles run so that they can clear up any image retention and prevent the occurrence of OLED screen burn or burn-in. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.